How are you? Uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, Wang Kim from Gyeonggi University Hospital uh, in Korea. I'm very happy to be the chair of the, this nice meeting. Uh, I will introduce uh, this session, uh, case presentation two, uh, presentation time for six minutes and uh, four minute discussion. Um, my co-chair not appear and uh, I uh, introduced the uh, three case presentations. First case, uh, percutaneous management of giant corona aneurysm of RCA and the subsequent intent this tenor of cover stand by uh, Shirang She. So uh, good morning panelists and attendees at the complex PCI 2020 virtual meeting. Uh, I'm presenting here for cutaneous management of giant coronary aneurysm of right coronary artery and subsequent restenosis of the covered stent. I have no potential conflict of interest to declare. The case is of a 50 year old male who underwent PCI with drug related stent to right coronary artery a chronic total occlusion of a mid RCA in the month of September 2018. He was admitted for a repeat coronary angiogram for a new onset of angina almost, almost five months later in February 2019. What we found on an angiogram was that the right coronary artery proximal part had shown a giant coronary aneurysm. The left system he had earlier undergone stent which was patent and uh, was there was no flow limiting lesion. So the point of discussions here are what was the etiology of coronary aneurysm, how to manage, and can imaging improve the outcomes if we plan to manage this with a PCI strategy. So briefly going through one by one, cause of aneurysm probably was a complex interplay of a previous medial injury due to CTO PCI to RCA, where there was possibly a true false true passage of the guide wire, followed by drug eluting stand implantation. Plan was to study with the IVAS at baseline to optimize the PCI with uh, stent graft implantation with the OCT guidance to ensure adequate apposition of the covered stent and document complete exclusion of the coronary aneurysm from the right coronary artery. There could have been other options like a coiling or surgery, but uh, having gone through uh, and discussing the treatment options, the patient chose for uh, percutaneous management. Going to the PCI details, it was a right femoral access, uh, seven French JR guide catheter, BMW guide wire, pre PCI, I was showed a proximal RCA to be about four millimeter in diameter. And uh, further down in the mid part, it was around 3.75 millimeter in the diameter. There was no instant restenosis. Pre PCI OCT was avoided for the fear of rupture of aneurysm due to a contrast injection for OCT image acquisition. Uh, 4 into 19 millimeter and 3.5 into 19 millimeter graft master covered stents were deployed in proximal RCA from the ostium with multiple post dilatation with the NC balloon dilatations and thereafter OCT study was performed. In brief, graft master, as we know, is an expandable polytetrafluoroethylene sandwich between the two identical stents and therefore it is a, a bulky device and when deployed the double wall thickness appears to be around 0.52 millimeter and therefore when we deploy at rated burst pressure or at nominal pressure if you can see that 2.8 millimeter graft master will achieve about 2.84 millimeter outer diameter when deployed at rated burst pressure but the internal diameter will be 0.5 millimeter less so it will be 2.32 millimeter we need to keep this uh, issue in mind when we are post dilating for the optimization of the pci result so this was uh, uh, treated with uh, two covered stents uh, and uh, we could see the end result that uh, there was complete exclusion of the aneurysm from the RCA lumen on table and the flow was good, procedure was successful. The post-PCI, these are the areas achieved in the proximal RCA, we could achieve minimal lumen area of about uh, close to 10.93 millimeter square and the mid RCA again about 11 millimeter square. Uh, at the area of overlap, however, the areas were much uh, relatively lesser and this was expected. Okay, the areas of uh, overlap of the two uh, oh, covered awesome. stents areas were about 7.45 millimeters square. Except for this focal area of a little lower uh, uh, minimal luminal dimensions, the rest of the result was exceedingly good. Uh, the stent graft on OCT appeared as a thin signal intense structure with a strong signal attenuation, which you can see in the right side of the image compared to the left side of the image, which shows a previously referred drug eluting stent. So there was a thin signal intense structure with a strong signal attenuation. These are further images through the, uh, through the OCT. 
and there appear to be at some focal points y thrombi at nine o'clock and three o'clock positions. And ultimately, overall, OCT showed that there was optimum opposition and uh, MLD was achieved throughout the length of the graph master deployed. So uh, further, going further, uh, four months after deployment of this graph master, patient had a new onset of angina in the month of July 2019. And uh, when we reviewed previous angiograms, uh, it appeared that the, uh, we have deployed the graph master optimally from the ostium. But as we see the images of uh, actual deployment, we see that uh, uh, the balloon of the graph master extends much ahead of the PTFE cover. And therefore, possibly the, uh, beyond the uh, balloon, uh, balloon markers, uh, the area of the proximal RCA probably must have got injured because of the uh, balloon dilatation of the graph master. And that could have been one of the substrate of proximal age restenosis. And as we see here, this patient had both proximal age restenosis at the ostium of the RCA as well as at the end of the graft master. Moreover, what we also notice that there is some shortening of the graft master deployed at the end of the four months. So uh, both the ends of the graft master patient had a age restenosis. Uh, we could find that there was uh, intimal hyperplasia at the site of uh, the stenosis. And uh, looking into this, we went ahead with a cutting balloon dilatation with a 3 into 12 millimeter uh, uh, cutting balloon deployed at, uh, uh, dilated at uh, 14 atmospheric pressure at uh, both the sites. And after having done that, we pre dilated with 3.5 and 4 millimeter NC balloon dilatation to optimize the result further. And the drug eluting stent further was put from four into 44 millimeter diameter from the ostium of the RC. And uh, it was further post dilated with a four into 12 millimeter at 24 atmospheric pressure. And uh, this is the final result, which appeared to be great as far as procedural success was concerned. And the uh, was successfully treated. Ivers post RCA showed area achieved about 13 millimeters square in the austral RCA and the proximal RCA and in the mid RCA areas which were about 7.45 millimeter before they appear to be in the range of about 8.45 millimeter square. So the take home messages are PCI with a covered stand graft is a typical strategy for managing aneurysms of non infective etiology. Imaging with Ivers may have a role in optimization of the PCI. Stand grafts when deployed may reduce the lumen diameter by 0.5 millimeter due to their strut thickness and almost one millimeter when they are overlapped. Relatively high incidence of instant in age degree stenosis demand a closer follow-up. And we need to remember that cutting balloon angioplasty and a drug eluting stand implantation remain an important strategy to manage ISR in the covered state. Thank you for a patient here. Uh, thank you, nice presentation. Uh, we, uh, uh, we will start a discussion time. We don't have enough time in uh, uh, three or four minutes. Any question or uh, comment from panelists? Uh, may I ask a question? Yes. Yes, uh, Dr. Shira. Um, do you, yes. Did you go back to the first angioplasty that was done and try to see what went wrong? Or, you know, was there an IVUS done at the first angioplasty? That's why, you know, was there a perforation that you missed or anything like right. that? Right. No, in the index angioplasty, uh, uh, imaging was not done. It was a proximal to mid RCA long CTO, chronic total occlusion. And uh, uh, the only uh, information we gather was that there was possibly a true false true passage. So some amount of uh, 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 interventional trauma to the vessel wall was uh, definitely there. And probably that was the reason that uh, it appeared to be developing uh, this kind of adverse remodeling and developed aneurysm. I suppose that is po uh, possible because we always do <clears throat> anterior dissection re-entry for yes. the CTOs, you know, and... Uh, Correct. So far, I've not had uh, the, the the unfortunate right. uh, event of developing such a big yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, may I ask another question if nobody wants to ask? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now you're saying that the old balloon overhang in the graph master yeah. is quite big, which is true. So sometimes yes. you don't go very high pressure with that balloon overhang, but you you. You implant yes. it at at um, nominal, pull it back, <clears throat> and then put in a very high uh, pressure balloon. So you're inside. This is typical yeah. edge, edge uh, injury due to very big balloon overhang, which 
We used to see in the yes. old days in the old design of the stands, but nowadays we have a very short overhang, you know. So right. I'm just wondering, right. I didn't quite catch that. Did you go very high pressure with the Graphmaster balloon itself or was it pulled out and you used an NC after that? No, it is a Graphmaster balloon only which was deployed at high pressure because we had to ensure that it opposes very well so that the aneurysm cavity is uh, completely extruded from the lumen. And it appears that it is a balloon injury because of that in the proximal part of the ostium. Probably it was not covered with the PTFE material. And that right. uh, interaction of uh, that injury as well as this bulky device, which is consisting of a sandwich of a two bare metal stand with a PTFE in between. That was potential uh, reason for re It right. appeared at both sides. Yeah. Right. I suppose when you see that, you, you get a bit worried, so you just tend to go out. But sometimes, yeah. because this is not a perf, sometimes you use the graph muscle for perforation, you have to go yeah. fast and quick. This one, yes. you've got time, so you can inflate, make sure it's all inflated, then deflate, then change it to a to a shorter balloon, uh, NC, and then remain within the struts, and you won't get the edge injury. Right. Agreed. Dr. Cha? Yes. Uh, what's the name of first stent at the city of PCI? In uh, new generation drone stent era, we don't, we usually don't see the uh, aneurysm of a uh, drug eluting stent. Yes. Yes. What's the name? Uh, of name, name of the stent. Hmm. Uh, the first first stent was uh, indigenous Indian stent that is called a supralimus grace. And uh, the last stent after Graftmaster restenosis, what we put was a Zions. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your nice presentation and discussion. Yeah. We move yeah. the uh, second right. presentation. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, second presentation is catheter induced aortic infection during coronary stenting surgery or intervention by David uh, Badasarian. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, okay. I, I hear you. Thank you. Uh, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am from Armenia. Uh, this, for me, it's a great honor. Uh, dear panelists, dear moderators and guests, thank you very much. My uh, presentation is catheter-induced aortic dissection during coronary surgery or intervention. So this is this, this my disclosure. Uh, clinical background, a uh, 56-year-old man admitted to the hospital for planar distal RCA stenting. In analysis, a month ago was stented mid-RCA due to STEMI, and a few days later was restented due to acute stent thrombosis. So totally he had a two BMS in the mid part of the RCA. He has as well as COPD and hypertension. Hmm. By ACG, ST depression and QS in inferior leads, by transthoracic echo, ejection fraction 35% with hypokinesis of the lateral and inferior walls and uh, mild mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. So uh, this is a coronary angiographic data. Uh, you can see in the left side uh, diffuse disease in a LAD uh, and in the mid part of the LAD and right side uh, same diffuse and uh, tight lesion in the left circumflex system. So this is uh, a uh, RCA uh, in the left side, uh, two BMS stand in stand position in the mid part of the RCA. And in the right side, you can see a distal RCA a PDA segment. This is a part of planet intervention. So cabbage uh, was suggested due to diffuse atherosclerotic lesions of the coronary arteries, but was rejected by the patient. Uh, and our procedure, uh, this is a right radial artery approach, six strand sheet, amplat left one guide catheter for better support during intervention on the distal parts. So, and we make a first injection of contrast to check the vessel. And this is what we saw. Uh, this is a dissection of the proximal RCA and the sinus of Valsalva. <clears throat> the patient began chest pain on the monitor sinus bradycardia, as the elevation and arterial pressure dropped. So in these situations, our symptomatic treatment was uh, analgesia with narcotic drugs, oxygen therapy, and inotropic agents. So what next? Uh, uh, maybe surgery. 
Uh, it's a good option, uh, but uh, a patient in a double antiplatelet treatment plus anticoagulation. So he has a high bleeding risk. And also is a STEMI patient, unstable patient. Uh, we had a discussion with the team and it was decided to stand off the Ostial RCA. So our uh, next uh, procedure, Atkins write for guide catheter uh, for less deep intubation of the RCA, the guide wire and recanalization. And in this period, vital signs became stable. Systolic blood pressure was uh, rise. Uh, heart rate is 65 and with constant regression of the chest pain. Uh, you can see uh, recanalization uh, RCA and uh, stent positioning in the outer osteal segment, 4.0 uh, and uh, 18 millimeter bare metal stent. Uh, you can see the outer osteal and proximal RCA position. And this uh, uh, final result, this section was safely sealed with a stent. And by uh, angiogram, uh, dissection is not uh, progression. Uh, in a few injections, we can see. So, uh, CT data in the next day, in the left side, you can see signs of local intramural hematoma. And dynamic observation did not show rapid progression of aortic dissection with arterial vascular involvement and other complications such as aortic regurgitation and pericardial effusion and tamponade. Follow up. In the following days, troponin tab was increased and the patient was discharged after six days. A month later, only uh, coronary artery bypass grafting was performed without any uh, other procedure. So uh, my discussion point and question in this situation for our guest panelists, uh, which guide catheter do you prefer for intervention of the RCA? So second, what guide wire would you use for the canalization vessel, which occluded by flap, if the workhorse didn't work? Uh, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, or so CTO wires? And uh, final question, CT timing and frequency, uh, once or several times during the next hours and days. And take home message, uh, cautious techniques that can minimize the occurrence of the iatrogenic dissection include, first, uh, checking pressure before every coronary injection. Second, avoiding, avoiding deep engagement of the guiding catheter, uh, catheters and maintaining a steady tension on the guiding catheter while the angioplasty balloon is withdrawn. Uh, prompt and timely recognition of this complication. And finally, uh, so minim minimizing futile efforts to help the progression of the dissection. And of course, uh, tanking in the many cases may, may be the best and quick treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice presentations at the case. Uh, we have uh, so many discussion time. Uh, I want to ask about uh, the guiding caster. I think if you choose the guiding caster from the start, uh, Jot can write cast guiding caster instead of Amblet's left guiding caster, it will be less harmful to do this dissection. Uh, it's okay for you? Uh, I chose Amblet's um, 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 left guide catheter before uh, I uh, want to be. Uh, uh, intervention in the distal part uh, for more support. You know, uh, uh, in other choice, uh, Jatkins right for my first uh, choice uh, in RCA intervention, usually. Yes, thank you. Be because uh, because uh, Amplas left guiding uh, or diagnostic, you know, is uh, many cases, uh, so the damage of the ostium of the... May I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yes. Since your guiding catheter was already there, right? Yes. When you you injected and caused the dissection, you already yeah. had a guiding catheter at the ostium. Uh, why didn't you just quickly pass a wire through and see whether it goes through? Because by pulling out that amplatz, putting in a neither guiding catheter, I don't know whether that would have caused more damage. Usually, if 
I've, I've had this case once and then whatever guiding catheter, as long as I know it's pointing in that direction, I'll immediately try to put a wire in so that I have access to the distal vessel before I do anything. And once I have access to the distal vessel, I'll just pull back the AL1 so the AL1 is now outside the ostium. Then it's okay. Yes. It can float. Then you can pass your stent in. Instead of taking out the whole thing, putting a new guiding catheter, trying to re-engage and everything, which may cause more harm. What are your comments on that? Uh, yes, you sure. But uh, when uh, I uh, did a first injection uh, after dissection, uh, so uh, RCA was occluded, uh, totally occluded, and my uh, amplus catheter is uh, engaged, very deep engaged. I, I can uh, working, and I change my uh, for uh, engagement. I change my uh, guide catheter. Oh, okay. So because I saw the picture, it looked as if it was it was still patent. There's one picture that showed that you injected the dye went all the way through. So I thought it would be after uh, yes, but after after second injection is uh, totally occluded. Oh, okay, okay. Then then you have no choice. You have to you have to re yes yes occluded with plug. Yes, yeah, it's not your stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one question. Uh, uh, if it if it uh, developed the uh, dissection by catheter induced or dye in dye induced uh, dissection. I firstly yes. uh, another another guiding catheter changing and the first wiring firstly because uh, uh, dye injection more aggressive aggressive aggravated the uh, dissection and then wiring post and the, and then I was confirmed the true lumen and the stenting so, uh, uh, minimally dye injection is the most important point I think. Yes, 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 I totally agree. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay thank you for your nice presentation. Thank, you. That, uh, thank the, you very much. Okay, thank you. Move the uh, third case. Um, the current call, uh, the useful case of Arcadia technique for calcified nodal in right coronary artery uh, from Takuma Chuda. Okay, let's start my uh, slides. Uh, no COI. The case was 65 years old May with uh, stable AP. So that uh, you can show the, you can uh, see that the mid RCA uh, severe stenosis with uh, uh, severe calcification like this. This is a carpet uh, IBAS image. So I will show the severe calcification. Uh, this time, the, I performed the rotor blader with uh, two, uh, two sides. Uh, with, uh, after that, the uh, cutting balloon was performed. And the uh, final angiography showed that uh, mm, not, uh, not so bad uh, final lumen area. You can see, like this. So, However, the one year later, the follow-up CAG showed that the uh, uh, severe stenosis in the, uh, the same region. So this is a discussion. So that the classified nodule uh, uh, reported to exist in the uh, mid uh, to uh, proximal LED and, uh, and uh, mid uh, to proximal RCA. So, after uh, of all that uh, if the calcified nodule was observed the uh, long time a long term uh, event free survivor was uh, developed uh, compared to the no calcified region so this is uh, just a uh, conference paper but uh, uh, this uh, slide show that uh, uh, calcified nodule have a high isr rate and high tr rate and after even after the uh, implanting DS or DCB. So how do you manage this region? The PCA but the uh, ISO region with cusper nodule after rotabreta plus uh, DCB. But uh, do you uh, think the what is the next option? So one technique is a uh, solution for this kind of situation. It's Arcadia. So the Arcadia is a uh, like this one. The conventional POBA is a uh, left one, but the Arcadia uh, is a right one. 
So I was guiding the wire was uh, inserted into the uh, calcified nodule. After that, uh, uh, ballooning was performed uh, via uh, inside the calcified nodule. So this is a uh, Arcadia. So you can see that the uh, IBAS image. So I will show that the uh, severe calcified nodule like this. And uh, this is a fast wire uh, like this. Okay, then uh, if you can get the IVAS image like this, but uh, you cannot understand uh, where is the target of the calcified nodule. So this is the time to uh, co-register uh, the IVAS engine geography like this. So that uh, from the uh, lumen bias with the fast wire, so that the uh, IVAS was rotate to co-register IVAS and, uh, and geography. So if the uh, IVAS was co-register to the and geography, so LAO was uh, seen from this side and RAO was from this side. After that, the uh, uh, nodule was observed in this position, so that the ideal course of second wire was this one, like this. So after that, the uh, angiography guided wiring was performed inside the uh, calcified nodule. So the second guide wire was inserted to the uh, inside the guide inside the calcified nodule, like this. You can see that the second wire was observed at 10 o'clock, but uh, after that, they disappeared inside the calcified calcification. After that, guide wire was relocated to the uh, distal room. So after uh, ballooning to the Arcadia Lume, so rotoborator and uh, DC and POBA was performed. So this is the final IVAS image. You can see that the very good large lumen was obtained after the Arcadia technique. So this is a comparison with the first session uh, final IVAS and uh, final second session IVAS. So compared to the final uh, uh, first session, the second session have a much larger uh, lumen after uh, Arcadia. So for up and geography show that uh, and the IVAS show the no risk analysis like this. And physical, physiological assessment also show that uh, uh, no risk stenosis, significant stenosis. So this is a take-home message. Uh, Arcadia technique could be one option for overcoming tough region with calcified nodule. However, this technique needs a high level of comp comprehension against diverse finding and right, uh, wiring technique. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice presentation and good nice technique. We have a discussion time. Yeah, I know you are very good operator of the, especially this year. But after rotorator, why you should the, uh, you choose the this year? Ah, uh, yes, it's a good point for this guy, uh, this case. So uh, maybe maybe the no need for the this year in this case. But uh, I want to develop more large plug with a uh, calcified. Uh, so that uh, if after the rotabrator, rotabrator was 2.15, <coughs> so that the uh, 2.15 lumen was obtained, but uh, this year could be get a uh, more large lumen. So I want to get a uh, uh, more large lumen be before the POBA. So I performed this year, but uh, uh, it could be, it not could be need uh, for this, guy, this case. I how think. much? How, how much can you retrieve the calcium? Ah, uh, yeah. This year. actually this year could work with uh, this kind of a situation. So the but uh, maybe for for uh, 13, 13 milligram tissue was uh, obtained oh. in this situation. But uh, during the uh, make the correct. For calcified nodule, why? Which do you choose the 
uh, wire. The second wire. Mm. Yes, it's a miracle. Miracle Bros. 12. Mm. So, yeah, not a, uh, yeah, 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 not a Gaia. Because that uh, uh, Kaifai nodule has a very, very large space before the, just before the uh, Kaifai. So, Gaia is the um, central uh, tissue of the Gaia, Gaia has a very thin. Mm -hmm. So, that, uh, but the uh, Miracle Bros have a very large core wire. So, uh, I think the, uh, the Miracle 12 is uh, uh, more work wire in this kind of situation. So, I chose the uh, Miracle Bros 12. I, I agree with your comment. Miracle, uh, Gaia wire, sometimes uh, the fracture on the calcification uh, uh, regions. And uh, I, I would recommend that <clears throat> Miracle wire is a good option. Mm. In your country, uh, covered by medical insurance for a tablet or a DCV or a a paper, all covered by medical issues yeah. in your Japan. Yeah. Uh, very good question. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Okay. To threaten coronary dissection, post drug coating balloon in a very young patient with non STEMI by Heng Shi Kim. Okay. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone, to the uh, esteemed panelists and moderator. I'm Kim Heng Shi, cardiology yes. fellow from Sultana Amina Hospital, Malaysia. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my case a life threatening coronary artery dissection, post drug coating balloon in a very young patient with non ST elevation myocardial infarction. I have nothing to disclose. My case is a 24 year old gentleman, BMI of 26, risk factor of chronic smoker with four pack years. He had no other uh, cardiovascular history of premature ischemic heart disease. He presented to us with thick pain angina, otherwise physical examination was unremarkable. He was admitted and treated as acute coronary syndrome due to typical angina. This is his initial ECG. Few hours later, his ECG progressed to a valent A-like ECG, where there are biphasic T inversion over the anterior and T inversion over the lateral leads. Uh, his troponin T came back as 1034 and subsequently treated as non-ST elevation MI and with a uh, dual antiplatelet, polar paranox and hydrostatin. He was this lipidemia with LDL of 3.4 millimeter liter and a non-diabetic. Kidney function was normal. He was then planned for inpatient coronary angiogram. This is his angiogram of an areocranial and spider wheel which show a tight osteo LED stenosis. Areocorder and areocranial, the circumflex was normal. Epicranial view and also epicorder view. RCA was uh, rather normal too. So our target lesion here is a um, osteo to proximal LED stenosis. We think it's an 80% type stenosis, and uh, this is a target lesion that's causing him to have a non-STEMI. So we have a very young 24 year old man with MI due to type osteo LED to proximal LED lesion. The point, uh, at this point of time, we consider a few issues. He definitely need a revascularization for his uh, osteo LED, but what will be the best strategy? Considering stand landing zone, should we land into left main as and is there any concern in left main stenting in such young patient due to the fact of a stent thrombosis and instant risk stenosis? So we have these start three options here. First is stenting from this left main to proximal LED. Second is to consider a single versus CABG and we will consider others option. In this case, we decided to go for others option where we chose the path of drug coating balloon from osteo LED to proximal LED. Thinking of concept of less is more. We have arranged a hard team discussion, concluded that PCI is a way to go rather than a single versus CABG. Also organized a meeting together with family and a patient, explain the availability of option before PCI. Our strategy here is a DES from a DEB from an osteo to proximate RAD and the bailout is a DES stenting in case there's a severe dissection or slow flow after DCB. So we started the case with intra arterial heparin 7000 loaded with copy dog growl, uh, right uh, six French approach with EBU35 guiding catheter wire to LED with BMW2, PT2 moderate support to circumflex. Dilating the proximal LED to osteo LED with a 3015 oh. non-compliant balloon at a nominal pressure. This is the angel run after first pre-dilatation. Then we upsize to NC3515 at nominal pressure at proximal and 12 uh, atmosphere at osteo LED. This is the angel run after the NC35 pre-dilatation. 
And you can see after a pre-dilatation at 3, 5, and C, uh, we notice there is a type A to B uh, coronary artery dissection. However, it's still a non-flow limiting dissection here. So um, this is before and after pre-dilatation at 3.0 followed by 3.5. Uh, we think the residual stenosis is uh, less than 30% with a type A to B dissection. According to our latest international DCB consensus, after pre-dilatation, if there's a no flow limiting dissection, residual stenosis less than 30%, we can consider to deliver a DCB. So we use a sequence please near DCB 3.5.25 um, deploy at a six atmosphere for 30 seconds. This is the angel run after the DCB. The type B dissection remained with a TIMI 3 flow. So we decided to wait for a while and repeat the angiogram. Throughout the period, patient no symptom, no ECG changes, and hemodynamically was stable. So this is after five minutes. Everything looks almost the same. So we decided to end the case, guiding catheter removed, six French radius sheet removed, prepare to send the patient to recovery ward. Unfortunately, after 10 minutes of the sheet, he complained of severe angina, sublingual GTN, and IV morphine given, but were non relieving. And you can see here there's an ST elevation over the V2 to V4. One area is reciprocal changes. Definitely, we have an MI ongoing. So we faster bring him back to the lab, use our right radio femoral artery, 7 French, XP35, and another 4000 heparin. This is the first shot, total occlusion of proximal LAD. So we decided to try with thrombus aspiration and thrombuster 7 French, but failed to aspirate anything, remain TIMI zero flow. So we dilate, uh, tried with a balloon, to, uh, S3015 uh, balloon, remain in uh, TIMI zero flow. At this point of time, patient very symptomatic of angina. So given more morphine, faster wire down to circumflex, decided to stand from left main to proximal LAD with 4038 DES. So this is the angel shot of 4038 DES. People say uh, bad things come in three, so we have one now, second is coming. So we, while we post the left main with a stem balloon at 10 atmosphere, patient developed ventricular fibrillation. Stem balloon immediately deflated CPR commands while preparing for defibrillation. Eventually, patient regained consciousness after two cycles of 200 joule defib and five minutes of CPR. We captured this uh, VF run from the cardiac monitor. Mm -hmm. So everything dislodged. After stabilizing him, we look uh, angel show a Dimitri flow with some uh, under expansion of stem. So post with NC4510 across the proximal LAD and high pressure inflation over the left main. This is the final shot angiogram. Post procedure, patient GCS was full, achieved resolution of chest pain, hemodynamically unsupported and resolution ST elevation. Luckily, unluckily, bad things only come twice. So his echo next day show a preserved LV function and discharge well after uh, two days uh, post PCI. So we have three discussion points here. First is the PCI strategy or more precisely, revascularization strategy in very young patients like my patient here. The use of DCB in this group of population and the de uh, dangerous of a coronary artery dissection. So PCI in a uh, young, very young patient, the optimal PCI strategy is less frequently discussed and even lesser in population less than 30 years old. The risk of instant restenosis and stent thrombosis is unignorable despite the newer generation of DES. And this raises a concern in using a DES in very young patient. And the concept of leaving nothing behind is attractive where the possible benefit of eliminating stent thrombosis Able to achieve a lower rate of risk stenosis by leaving no matter behind and in MI, during the high thrombus burden and inflammatory state, possible benefit less mild opposition and homogeneous administration of drugs is very logical. Do we have data to use DCB in MI? Yes, but data remains small. Anyhow, the concept of using DCB is remain very attractive. And the third is about coronary artery dissection. It was reported about one fifth of dissection is after balloon dilatation, and the presence of this strongly indicates abrupt closure of worsen. So it's very important to correctly identify and classify coronary artery dissection. And one of the commonest ways is with the National Heart Lung Blood Institute classification, where type C to F dissection costs up to 30% of abrupt risk uh, closure. Retrospectively, looking back at my case, I think we possibly did with a type C dissection rather than a B, where in this angel run, you can see the persistence of contrast remain. So in summary, management of coronary artery disease in very young patients remain challenging. And our case illustrates the dilemma in treating this group of patients. Consider DCB versus DES strategy, and DCB remain an attractive strategy in treating the novel lesion or SCS lesion in very young patient. Hopefully, we can see more data in future. And the last but not least, the vigilant intra and post PCI monitoring of patients with coronary artery dissection remain relevant. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice presentations. Very, uh, very uh, interesting case presentation. Thank you. Any comment or or? Uh, uh, may I say something? Yes, Dr. Ajay. Yeah. <clears throat>
Yeah, uh, Shruti. Uh, first of all, um, this whole DEB thing, uh, I think, does not really apply to an austral LED where you have a big surf coming out. And here we do not know where the plug extends to how much into the left main. So if I were to do this with DEB, I must either to make sure the left main is completely clean, number one. Number two is, if you want to open up a postural LED and not put a stand, I would go very gently, not with an NC balloon, but with a scoring balloon where your dissection will be controlled. So you can put a score flex or, or uh, NSC alpha or something, open it up very nicely, check with the IVERS that there's no significant residual stenosis and that it does not go into the cell before putting in the DCD, after that check again, then you are very sure. Here it was actually a dissection which you missed because angio is so bad in finding out. Now, if this were in mid LED, I think there's no problem. Mid cert, distal cert, no problem. Austral LED is a dinosaur by itself. We have to be really, really, really careful. Yeah, after this case, actually, we realized that probably um, it's a type C rather than type B. Yeah, so we, yeah, yeah, that, we can run away with it. Um, Probably, like you say, Ivers uh, imaging is very helpful in this case. Uh, so uh, we learn from mistake. And uh, yes. after this case, and after that, whenever we deal with it, we wait longer and longer, you know, 10 minutes or something like that, and repeat the angel again and again before we decided to end the case. Uh, so um, we, 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 we do think that DCB maybe have some more role in future. And let's see uh, how the data bring us to. The, the whole issue is that when you have postural, uh, you want to know where the plug goes in. Almost always the plug is extending into the left main. Then you yes. want to know, even if you put a stand, whether you want to put a stand all the way into the left main, what's yeah. the size and all that. So very tricky. Right? So austere, especially you see the thing is angulated, you know. Yeah. Then, wow, you're very brave to use a DCB. Right? <laughs> because you are thinking a very young patient, 24 years old guy, you know, um, agreed. considering that, agreed. then we thought, okay, let me try and see. <laughs> agreed, agreed. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Uh, I think that the other cool thing for in this patient is good option, but I, if my patients, I choose the you know, stent for this patient because the left main equivalent for proximal LED region. And then I, uh, before the procedure, I um, confirm the uh, plug and the plug morphology on the stenosis for IV, using the IVUS. Both uh, uh, in very young patient to rule out the spasm. Okay. And uh, uh, what do you think about the uh, panel and uh, presentation in this case? Drug uh, stent versus drug coating balloon. I'd like to both uh, in this patient. I prefer the stent. <laughs> One, two, three. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone will be standing. Oh. Uh, so I, for me, probably I will stand also after this. Uh, so you see, I mean, make the case much easier, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, we have a very eventful uh, day for that patient. Uh, so I'm uh, very lucky, um, able to uh, run away with a complication and he recovered well. And uh, I'm, I'm actually repeating his uh, angel next week, actually. Hopefully we can see what the things goes on. Uh. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Can you repeat? Please do an IVERS. I want to see you sure, want to sure, see sure. what happen. Do an sure. IVERS. Sure, sure, Dr. Dr. Ajesh. Okay. Any question or comment from the panel or presenter? Okay, no? Okay, we move Thank the you. final case presentation. Thank you. Complex, oh, thank you for a nice presentation. Complex PCI of CTO, make it simple by Islam uh, El Elzaid Sheata. Yes, I hear you. Okay. Thank you, my okay. dear uh, uh, professors. And I, I, I want to greet you, warm greeting from here, from Egypt. Um, and thank you all the scientific committee of Complex BCI 2020. Um, and I want to share my presentation now which complex BCI of CTO of LCX using provisional stenting make it simple. You saw my presentation now. In my presentation, complex BCI of CTO of LCX using provisional stenting make it simple. I am Dr. Islam Shahata from Egypt. Warm greeting to all my dear professors of complex BCI and all my dear ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, seeing we now. On virtual on this great virtual meeting. 
disclosure. I had no potential conflict of interest. Discussion points, I want to, uh, these points to be discussed in our presentation. How to simplify your procedure as much as possible for more patient safety. How to put your plan before intervention of CTO lesion. Provisional one stent technique is better than bifurcational stent. This is clinical presentation of our patient. He is 50 years old, male patient, no family history of ischemic heart disease, uh, presented by non ST segment elevation MI. Uh, risk factors he was hypertensive, no diabetic dyslipidemic. He was hemodynamically stable, and local examination was free. This is posterior anterior view of coronary angiography for this patient, shows osteal total LCX as we see here. This is a spider view, shows osteal total LCX. This is our eocodal view, shows osteal total LCX. This is right coronary angiogram for this the same patient of LAO cranial view, shows retrograde filling of LCX from right coronary artery. So our plan to do anti-grade approach for opening this CTO occlusion. And we first inserted BMW universal wire, which pass through the total occlusion and pass into the OM1. Then we insert a second wire in the LCX, then over this guide wire, which was the same also BMW, we insert our pre-dilatation balloon, which measures 1.5 by 15 millimeter and inflated at 14 ATM. Then after control, after pre-stenting or pre-dilatation balloon, our control angiogram showed that some flow in the LCX was, uh, was more bitter. And we insert the second wire in LED, LED to protect it during our planning for BCI of LCX. So we have two wires now, one in LED to protect it during our BCI, and another wire or was maintained in LCX proper, and the wire in, in OM was removed. Then we inserted our direct stenting, Bromus Premier stent, three by 20 millimeter and positioned carefully from the ostium of LCX, as this is the first knob, uh, till this, this distal knob. And uh, our plan was for provisional stenting. Uh, as we see here, this acute angle between LAD and LCX, which uh, um, give our chance to do provisional stenting without need for bifurcational stenting for LAD. Now, Bromus Premier stent inflated at 14 ATM, and after inflation and position, our final result with Timmy 3 flow of LCX was maintained with all its, its branches, uh, even OM1 has also maintained the flow in it without any harm occurred in LAD or left mean. This is before BCI. LCX was totally occluded from its ostium, and after BCI, final result was Timmy 3 flow maintained in LCX. Our take home message to simplify your procedure as much as possible for more patient safety. Take your time to put your plan before intervention of CTO lesion. Protect your side branch by another wire during intervention with bifurcational lesion. Start by soft wires for CTO lesions, then upgrade accordingly. Provisional one stent technique can be used in certain cases of total osteal LED or LCX lesions with consideration to anatomical variations. Be ready to change your plan if any complication occurs. Finally, thank you. Okay, thank you for your nice presentations. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you for having me there. <laughs> your performance is very important for CTO intervention. Uh, we have a uh, discussion time. Uh, may I say something? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think this was a real true CTO because the BMW seemed to have passed quite easily. So the first thing is, I think it's probably just a tight SERP, maybe calcified. Therefore, they have collaterals. And then maybe there was a little clot or what that caused the acute event. So what you managed to do is actually managed to get the wire through that little bit. That's why it was quite easy. And I do agree, this is like T-stenting, you know. The, the, if your angle is 90 degrees, it's very, very easy to get it exactly at the ostium. The worry is when there's a 30% angle, then you have the struts sticking out and all that. Then a, a, a proper bifurcational stenting becomes necessary. So I think that this was uh, very nicely done. And uh, I think you're very lucky that, uh, you know, that it was actually not the true CTO. So a BMW got in quite easily. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I think so. I, I think that this region was the old city region, not the old city region, but recent the freshly occluded region, I think, was <laughs> easily the soft wire, easily tested. If you check the uh, I was image, but you can see the any uh, origin of thrown by, I think. <laughs> Okay. If you have any question or comments from panel and the... Yeah, can I make a point here? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. The Austria circumflex lesions, uh, whenever they are stented, they are uh, very notorious for inviting these stenosis. So just wanted to ask whether you have done post dilatation with the non compliant balloons. I'm asking uh, Dr. Islam. Yes. Yeah. Did you do a post dilatation at the left circumflex ostium with the NC balloon? Uh, no, the non confined balloon? I didn't yeah, do so any post dilatation right. balloon. So, Just yeah. it the stent uh, by the same right. balloon of the stent, and uh, the result was right. very fine. No need for post dilatation yeah. balloon. I agree. Correct, but if you see your end result, your ostium looks little under dilated compared to the uh, rest of the part of the proximal circumflex. And uh, we usually always do osteal stents are always to be post dilated with non-compliant balloons for better <laughs> position and to better achieve a minimal luminal area. It may not be possible always to do imaging, but uh, we should make it a rule that osteal lesions, osteal stents always to be post dilated uh, for optimizing the PCA. Yes. Otherwise, they I have agree. high chance of restenosis. Yes, I agree. But uh, the result was very optimal, so I didn't uh, do any. Yeah. I do, don't so, do any right. harm from the lesion. Right. <laughs> I agree, but that is what the point I'm making. Angiographically, they will be looking excellent, uh, but if you don't have IVUS, you are never sure that it is excellent. And therefore, yes. short of fibers, at least make it a rule that we need to post dilate all of them, however good they may look on angiogram. Yes, I agree. Mm. I totally yeah. agree. Dr. Shah's comment, yeah. very important point for that uh, ostium or bifurcation region. Yeah. I usually yeah. would, usually use the uh, non compressed balloon implantation post PCI stenting yes. without the IBUS imaging. Hello. Uh, can I make a comment? Okay. Uh, Tom? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I think uh, IVUS is, um, uh, is important in this case because uh, uh, we have to want to know the, um, you know, the extension of the proud, uh, from the osteosha, whether it's extended into the left main. So in that case, IVUS can tell that, can tell us whether, uh, uh, whether there's lesions extending the left main. In this case, we have to also to take care of the uh, 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 stenosis. Which is in left main. So in that case, your plan may change uh, according to the IVUS uh, imaging. This is my comment. Okay. Yes. Yep. Very good comment. Uh, if you have any question or comment, I'd like to close this session. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for your nice lecture and the nice presentation and nice discussion. Um, uh, Thank you. Okay, Thank I'd you. like to finish this session. I thank all speakers and uh, panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting.
Bye-bye. Bye. See you again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Overcome the coronavirus. <laughs> Contact. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.